Hi, this is Shane Bendhausen, the Director of Business Development at Ignition Entertainment. I recently had the rare opportunity to visit SNK Playmore's offices in Osaka, Japan to check out the development of the King of Fighters 12 right there at the source. 2009 also marks the 15th anniversary in the King of Fighters franchise, so we sat down with the developers Kukino and Jinsenji to talk about all the cool things going on in the world of King of Fighters. The super special moves in King of Fighters 12, they almost feel like a throwback to King of Fighters 94. Was this an intentional decision you guys made? King of Fighters 12. So basically the entire concept for the game, and characters for that matter, was back to basics. So yes, we definitely wanted to resurrect the cool feelings that the King of Fighters had back in the day. We were happy to discover that the evasive nature of King of Fighters still carries on in King of Fighters 12. How important is it to dodge, backstep, and roll in order to be a good player in this game? Ah, yes. Master rolling, dashing, and backstepping are very important in the King of Fighters 12. And once a player has finally mastered them and is able to use all of these moves freely, their perception of their battles will definitely change for the better. Overall, the King of Fighters 12 feels a lot more accessible and friendly to newbie players um, who've never really played King of Fighters before. Was this the intent at SNK Playmore? The main development concept for the King of Fighters 12 was Rebirth. So, we wanted to create an entirely new King of Fighters. And these days I think that fighting games have become too complicated. So, we decided to get back to basics and concentrate on simply making the game fun again. What do you attribute the long-lasting popularity of the King of Fighters franchise to? The King of Fighters 12 is one of the most popular fighting games from SNK, and by far the biggest attraction of the series is the characters. And for every iteration of our game, we concentrate heavily on the characters and the balancing of them. We also figure out what the best controls are for each character in every version of our game. Really, this whole series has evolved from the fans of the game and the fans of these characters. In many ways, King of Fighters 12 feels like a throwback to the simpler, pure titles that you know, the beginning of this franchise. Um, why did you decide to get rid of some of the recent innovations from King of Fighters 11, such as the tactical leader system, multi-shift, and the judgment bar? For the King of Fighters 12, I wasn't interested in making just a simple clone of 11. So 12 is completely independent of the previous titles. And like I was saying earlier, these days we've noticed that when you're playing a 2D fighting game, most of them have become very complicated or very systematic. So when we started making the game, we decided to focus on the most attractive part of the game, which we feel is the tension and the feeling the player gets when they hit their opponent. So we decided to basically go back to the simple and original feel that people liked about our fighting games. And that is why the King of Fighters 12 is titled Rebirth. So again, after closely re-examining the fundamentals and the basics of fighting games, we came up with the King of Fighters 12. So why did you decide to get rid of the default teams for King of Fighters 12? For 12, instead of concentrating on the story so much, we decided to focus on the game's concept which is the clashing between the characters. We decided to prioritize the graphics of the characters and the characters' personalities, and that's the reason we decided not to set the default team for 12. The revamped critical counter system offers players a new way to turn the tide of the battle. Why did you decide to change the system for this game? To make full use of this system, you'd use it to try and lower your opponent's guard by getting close to him or her while the critical counter gauge is flashing. And you can also use it by butting into your opponent's combination attack, and that is when you can get the maximum use out of it. We've noticed that players have much more freedom to execute guard breaks whenever they want. How does this change the flow of combat? By being able to use the guard breaks freely, the player's chances of getting damaged has greatly increased. 
So because of this, the battles are usually a lot more heated up and they get a lot more intense. We've also noticed the new deadlock system offers a great opportunity for defensive and offensive play. Um, what's the secret to triggering the situation and how do players master it? Well, for the King of Fighters 12, we have a ranking system for each attack. So in order to make a deadlock occur, you and your opponent must use an attack on each other of the same rank. So to make the best use of this, you should try to understand the rank of each attack that you are using and try to remember it. And by remembering the rank of each attack, you'll be more likely to be able to initiate a deadlock once you know what your opponent's attack is going to be. In the previous titles, you were only able to use a guard or some type of evasive maneuver to avoid an opponent's attack. But now, you can also take advantage of the deadlock and try to even make a combo out of it. Now that we have a firm grasp of the background of the King of Fighters franchise, join us next time to explore the intricate details of the artistry behind the King of Fighters 12.